Hello everyone, it's Tom from CoaJoint here and today I have something very exciting to show you. Um, all of my software for CoaJoint is now available in the Unity Asset Store which I'm very very happy about. Uh, today I'm going to be going through CoaJoint Orbit which is what you can see on the Unity Asset Store here. Um, so without further ado, let's show you exactly what uh, CoaJoint Orbit is all about and uh, get straight into the product here. So as those of you who have been following my YouTube channel over the past year and a bit will know, um, CoJoint Orbit is an adaptive AI editor extension for Unity. Um, to install the software, all you do is download it off the Unity Asset Store and import it into your project. It's as simple as that. So the idea behind Orbit is to model a user by a set of skills and then adapt the behavior of the AI depending upon the user's skill levels. So in the example that I've got open here, um, let's say that we're modeling a character in a game with seven skills. So we've got three aggressive skills on the left here, uh, three defensive skills on the right here. Now, say in our game, uh, if we're using a lot of aggressive skills, so we're high leveled or we have a high ability in those skills, um, what Orbit allows us to do is to teach the AI that if those skill levels are high, then we need to become more defensive or perhaps we need to use a lot of, say, um, uh, change our positions or change the skills that the AI are using for example and if we were more defensive maybe we could have the AI become more aggressive and say um, use more attacking skills to, to try and counteract your defensive play. Now as far as I'm concerned there are no built uh, you know standardized ways of doing this in games at the moment so Orbit it has quite a unique position in, you know, um, in game development at the moment and Personally, I hope, I, and I hope you agree, I think this can offer some quite exciting possibilities in games. So the idea of having AI adapt to our behavior, I think, is quite appealing and can add an extra dimension to your games that would be quite difficult to build, uh, build in yourself without the addition of uh, Orbit. So without further delay, let's take a look at how to actually use the Orbit Editor. Using the Orbit Editor is a very simple two-step uh, process first part is to train your AI in the Orbit Editor, which is what I've got open here, and then you build your training into a .NET assembly. Um, this requires no configuration, no fuss, it really is as simple as it possibly could be. Now the first thing you need to get familiar with in, uh, when using Orbit is the idea of a library. And then a library is simply a placeholder for your networks. So the way that I envisage the software working is that for each game, uh, you have one library, one Orbit library for your game, and in that library, you have different networks. Now, different networks are where all your, your the network, sorry, are where your skills are actually stored and where you model a user. So, for example, you might, might want an, one network for the main character in the game, one network for uh, a secondary character, or you know, um, your uh, helper in a game, and then you might have a network for the enemies in the game, and they would all exist in the same library. So. To create an orbit library, you go to the project view and press orbit uh, and press orbit skill library there. Um, we won't go into all those sort of details for this video, as I'll, I'll be doing a tutorial series um, to show you building um, a, a training in orbit from start to finish. So let's just go straight to Library Explorer. This is a library that I've already created called Example Library, and as you can see, there are two networks in here already: uh, Example Network Two and Example Network Twenty One. Um, one is a clone of the other, so there's no, don't worry about the differences between the two. But this is the actual format of an orbit network in a game. Um, to create an orbit network in an existing library, you simply go to the Library Explorer and press the Add button there, and that will bring up a window to create a new network. Now, in the Network Editor, which is this uh, window up here, um, you can create your skills which you want to use to model your user. Uh, now, the editor allows you to move these all around. And you can select all your skills. Um, and the other feature that you can see here is that I'm using groupings. Now, groupings, as we'll see in a moment, are extremely important for using uh, the Orbit Trainer, which is how you actually train your AI on a network. And we'll see the results of an Orbit group in a moment. But the idea is that if um, skills, i.e. these two skills here are in the same group, if skills are in the same group, then they'll probably have similar levels in the game. So in this fictional example, uh, we've assumed that it's unlikely that someone who has a in high Inferno skill will have a really low Flamethrower skill. And that can be useful for creating realistic training examples in the Orbit Trainer, which is what we see right now. So, now that we've created a network in the 
or, uh, network editor, let's train the network using the orbit train. Now, training using the orbit trainer involves three steps. The first part is to create classifications, the next part is to classify training examples, and the last part is to test our AI. Now, let's show you exactly how we create classifications. We do that by pressing this uh, uh, orange symbol up in the top left hand corner, and that will open up the classification setup window. Now, classifications are used to label different play styles of the user. So, in our previous example, we could have three classifications. We could have aggressive, we could have defensive, or we could have a mixture of the two, you neither. So let's create those now. Aggressive, defensive, neither. Now what we're going to do is we use these classifications to classify different training examples so that the AI knows exactly how to react when it comes across a user who has similar uh, skill levels as a training example. So let's press accept. Now this brings up a training example. A training example is a simulation of a user's possible skill levels at some point in the game. We classify a training example so that if the AI comes across a real user with similar skill levels, it knows what those skill levels means and hence knows the best way to react to it. So what we see here is each of our level, uh, each of our skills, sorry, that we saw in the network here, has now has a, a corresponding level. What the orbit trainer is asking us is how are we going to classify a user who had this particular skill set? Now, the first thing you notice is that the defensive skills are grouped on the right here, the aggressive skills are grouped on the left, just as in the uh, network editor. Um, so this is quite convenient for us. Um, we've now got to give a number, one, two, or three, corresponding to aggressive, defensive, or neither, of how we're going to classify this user. Now, this user is using defensive skills, so we're going to classify them as a two. And all we do is we enter a 2 into the, uh, the console here, press enter. This will generate a new training example. Now, what's happened is that Orbit has now taken note of that classification and said, OK, if I come across a user like that, I'm going to classify them as a defensive sort of player. Now, one example or 20 examples or 50 examples may not be enough to cover all possible um, sort of Rough, roughly rough groups of, of uh, skill distribution, so a particular skill set for a user. So we need to classify lots of different training examples so that the AI can react to any possible example. Now obviously there are a very very large number of possibilities of different skill levels, but if we, if we manage to classify maybe a hundred different examples, which doesn't actually take that long, we can cover nearly every single possible case approximately. So when the AI actually comes across a user whose skills are similar to but not exactly the same as a training example, it will know what to do. And this is all um, done using the, mach the machine learning um, software which I've implemented in the background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to classify a few more examples. Um, this is a Neva, and this is a defensive player again, and another defensive player. Now you can see how the orbit groups come into this because the, you can see that for the training examples that we've looked at so far, the orbit groups have determined that the training levels of these skills have been quite similar. Now, in this one, they're all exactly the same um, for the defensive skills, but it's not usually the case. It's just a very convenient tool for training because we want to generate lots of examples, but we want them to be realistic. And that's exactly what the, uh, the grouping system allows us to do. Now, after you've generated a lot of training examples, you need to go into testing mode. And what testing mode uh, enables you to do, I won't show it here because it's unnecessary for this video. Um, testing mode allows you to um, test how good your classification is, and it will actually give you a percentage accuracy um, of how well the AI can actually uh, classify examples based on the training examples that you've provided. And that's the entirety of the training process. The last thing that we need to do is now that we've created our training, uh, which we have done in this example here, this all does come uh, with the project actually, this is an example which you can uh, play around with yourself. Um, you need to go to, you need to build it into a DLL. And to do that, you go back to the project view, you click on your uh, library in the libraries folder again, and you press generate runtime library, uh, you press generate runtime library from asset. And this will create a .NET assembly in the builds folder here. Um, so now that we've generated our uh, 
uh, .NET assembly um, encapsulating all of our training examples, we need to use it in a game. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another project now and uh, show you exactly how um, this could be used. So here we are in a new project and I've created a scene called test scene here. And um, I've put a script on the main camera because we don't need anything else. Um, this test script, I'll just open it up now in Mono Develop. Um, you'll notice here that we've got the example library imported and also you need to export um, or you need to copy over to this project the unity svm.dll file and you can find that in the um, orbit folder of your uh, orbit project. And uh, here's the script that's on the camera. Uh, you'll notice that we've the uh, the library that we used in our um, in the orbit editor was called example library, and the DLL file that was built is called example library build. So we've included the name of the DLL in the script, and then in our mono behavior, we're simply instantiating an example of the network example network, which was one of the networks in the library. And then in start, we're going to just call the classify method. And what the classify method does is it returns an integer, in this case, one, two, or three, uh, dependent upon the a double array that you pass to it um, of the levels that you want it to classify. So all I'm printing out to the console here is the classification that we're going to get. And the these levels here represent a possible training example. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, uh, IL spy so you can see the assembly and um, because in the assembly we can see um, sorry not the assembly in the um, um, reflected code we see that each of these numbers what actually what actual skill that refers to and uh, what you'll see is that um, this these particular levels here represent a very aggressive player so hopefully when we press start we see um, we see the level one so uh, each entry into this double array corresponds to a uh, enumerated uh, the name of an enumerated skill so each level here this let me put that over here so we have flamethrower fireball heat fireball generate fire inferno heal burns so that number there is for fire a flamethrower fireball uh, heat um, firewall and so on and so forth so as you can see, these uh, flamethrower is an aggressive skill, fireball was an aggressive skill, and so is inferno. So there's the ones that I have produced as high levels. Let's just run this, and in the console we indeed see one. So the example has been classified correctly. So this is just a very simple example, but you can see how this will be used in the game. We could just go through the game, and we'd call the classify function uh, or method, sorry, at various points in the game. To update the AI on the best way to behave for the current the, uh, the skill uh, set for the user at that particular time. Now, as you've seen in this video, this is one particular example. There are so many different ways that I can see this software being used. It could be used in educational software. It could be used to adapt the difficulty of the game. Um, in my other videos, I show you how Orbit can be used uh, for morality modeling. So uh, something similar to um, Bioshock, for example, or Mass Effect, but with more complexity and uh, um, more feedback from how the user is actually playing the game. Um, I hope this video has been insightful. Um, make sure to check out the software in the Unity Asset Store. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And don't be afraid to like or subscribe, as I've got more information about my other software coming soon, as well as more tutorial videos. So thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you soon. Cheers.